Hello, welcome to this first webinar this year, and thank you for joining. My name is Bas Hoxberger, and I'll be your host today to welcome you and support where required. My colleague Ryan Sainsbury will be presenting this webinar. If you have any questions or audio video issues, use the button, buttons at the bottom of your screen to get in touch. Uh, we might answer them right away or at the end of this webinar. I see a nice list of attendees that seem to vary from starting engineers to established lighting designers, so I hope we can make this interesting for all of you. Without further ado, let me hand over to Ryan and let's get started. Thank you very much for that, Baz. Uh, welcome everyone to our second series uh, of our webinars. So as uh, Baz has already said, um, we've got a lot of uh, people joining us today. Um, today's webinar, which is um, Enti uh, titled Getting Started with Faros is really aimed at people who are new to our system. And basically, we just wanted to create some video content and a webinar that uh, introduced people who've never ever used Faros before to some of the basic concepts and also just to kind of um, get you going on your way to programming your first system. So we're going to show you a lot of resources that you can access for free on a website, which hopefully will give you the information that you need to get started. So with that in mind, I've split this webinar up into four rough sections. First of all, we're going to talk about what Faros is, what it does, the type of applications that it's typically used for. Then we're going to talk about our hardware, which is um, used to output to your, your project. Um, and then finally, the software that you use to program our hardware and some external uh, ex uh, resources that you can use um, to learn more information about our system. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start um, just by looking at what Faros is. <clears throat> so Faros is a architectural lighting control system. It's been designed with flexibility in mind, so it'll allow you to run some really nice uh, dynamic lighting shows, but it'll also allow you to do different things like zonal control, controlling independent areas. And it's also been designed so that it has lots of different options for integration. It's very easy to install and it's very easy to program. The idea being that once you've programmed the Faros hardware, you leave it on site, you can disconnect your laptop and then just walk away from the site with the hardware running the routines on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's been specifically designed for the architectural market. We're not a PC-based solution. Everything uh, that outputs to your fixtures and to your system uh, will be hardware-based that's been designed uh, here in London. So I'm going to have a little look at the typical applications that you can use uh, Faros with. So we go from the really, really big installations. Uh, this is a typical uh, project uh, that we would um, call a citywide project. So these are uh, projects that are multiple buildings across a river, for instance, like what you can see on screen. So I believe this is 75 buildings, uh, all being controlled from a Faros system uh, that make up a big media facade. So we go from the very, very big to going to a lot smaller uh, installations, maybe a single media facade or maybe a hotel lobby or a reception room, a nightclub. And Faros can be scaled up to meet requirements of both. Um, it just means that you need to either add more hardware or use hardware uh, that has a high universe limit. So in terms of protocols, uh, Faros handles multiple protocols, um, but there are two different controller types uh, that we uh, will need to look at first. Uh, so we have our LPC and our VLC family controller types. Um, you can access this page to get a little bit more information about the difference between controller types. And you can go to this page uh, by going to our website, going to products, controllers, and then just simply clicking which controller I need. And then you can have a read through this list and it will tell you the difference between the two different controller types, the LPC and the VLC family. So as I said, uh, Faros handles mot multiple protocols, uh, not just DMX. We can do different forms of EDMX, such as Streaming ACN, ArtNet, and Kynet. And of course, uh, we can handle other protocols that are not necessarily lighting based, such as Serial, RS232485, uh, also stuff like MIDI. And also you can have um, uh, uh, sets of uh, physical inputs as well to integrate your system further. In order to sometimes uh, 
integrate with the, um, exterior systems that handle protocols uh, such as DALI or, or Serial, you may want to include an accessory device. The accessory devices can be used as an add-on to the system. It's important just to remember that you always need a controller within your system. That's the brains, that's the processing uh, power of, of the system. The accessory devices just extend the functionality of Pharos. So we have uh, our remote devices, which you can see online, which can often uh, extend that functionality. But we also have devices such as button panels and touch screens, which the user can use uh, to integrate with the, or interface with the system rather. So our system is primarily a network-based system, meaning that you're gonna have to have a computer network in place if you want to use uh, more than one controller or a controller and some accessory devices. In order to, uh, Get you guys going we've got some really good resources up on our website and these are our uh, wiring diagrams that are completely free uh, to access um, and they will just give you a basic overview of how you should uh, set up the infrastructure for your system and you can access these uh, just by going to our downloads section and then going to documents and then wiring diagrams if we have just a, a look at a typical example of a wiring diagram you can see that in this uh, diagram, we've got two LPCs, which is our, you know, our most popular controller, and that they are networked through a very simple networking switch. <clears throat> our controllers, our smaller controllers and accessory devices can be powered via power over Ethernet, but you can also use a 48 uh, volt DC power supply as well. Our bigger controllers are generally made to power. So that's the hardware, um, but the hardware on its own, as soon as you get it out of the box, it's not going to do anything. You need to program it. And in order to program it, you need to use our designer software. So you can download designer from our website. It's completely free to download. You get a full license um, because obviously without the hardware, the, the, the designer software will effectively not do anything. It's not used for outputting data and it's not used for programming other manufacturers' hardware. It's specifically designed for our hardware, programming, permissioning, and configuring our hardware. As I said, you can download it for free. It's supported on both Windows and OS X. And you can download that by, again, just going to our website, going to the download section, hitting software, and you want to look for Designer 2. In order to support you, uh, learning our designer software and learning how to program our hardware. We have a set of online tutorials and videos that you can go to on a website. Again, if you just go to the support section and click on video tutorials, it will take you to this page. And the video tutorials have been split up into different sections. So first off, we have our online training course. Um, normally what happens on the last Thursday of every month in London, we have like an open house session. We call it our boot camp training. People come down completely free and they get hands on with the hardware. And I just basically go through a day's worth of training with them just to get them started uh, from the absolute basics up until, you know, commissioning the first system. Obviously, in light of the current pandemic, what we've decided to do now is record that same boot camp training and put that up on our website. So again, that can be accessed. They're all uh, free for you to go have a look at and on YouTube. And we've split it up into nine different sections. Each video is between 20 and 30 minutes. So you can just go at your own pace. So as well as that, <clears throat> for people who've maybe done the bootcamp training and have, uh, you know, learned a little bit about programming Faros, we also have a set of quick tip videos. And these are just there just to give you a couple of quick tips just to improve your workflow and just to get to know some of the other features within Designer. So we have a whole host of different uh, documentation that you can use to, again, further your knowledge. Two things that I always like to point out to new users is that they should have a look at the installation guide. And the installation guide is uh, a very well written document that will tell you how to install your hardware properly, how to troubleshoot hardware should you need to, different things like error codes and also uh, the different types of ports on controllers, how they should be connected um, and also the types of power that each device is rated for. As well as this, we have the online help as well. And the online help uh, can be a really, really useful tool if you're looking for something very specific in designer. Uh, it will go for all of the windows, but you can also use it to search for specific items. And then of course, uh, you can just get to the information that you need in order to um, just help you out with whatever you're stuck on. 
Furthermore, we have application notes and the application notes, again, which can all be accessed uh, via the um, support and download section. These application notes are really, really useful if you want to know a little bit more information about a very specific subject. So for instance, uh, as I mentioned before, all of our hardware is networked. So if you're working with an IT team and they need to know what types of ports to unblock and what type of multicast groups to allow on their network, we have an application note for that. Uh, you can go onto the uh, Ferris website, download that, and obviously just give that to your IT team. But it's more than just you know, you know, know, configuring networks. We also have application notes for how you can integrate with other systems via HTTP or via relays or serial or even via Ethernet uh, integration. So finally, we have a list of uh, downloadable resources as well. So these are like project files, which you can download and have a look at um, specific programming scenarios. We also have some lighting scene presets, also known as timeline presets, which you can download. Uh, there is a uh, free custom web interface that you can download, put onto the controllers so that you can access your um, lighting scenes and your, and your playback and your controls via something like a mobile phone, which will be connected to the, uh, the network of the controller. And then we also have stuff like drafting aids, which I think can be particularly useful if you're designing a system um, and you want to obviously just incorporate some of the Faris products into that design. So finally, um, the technical support is a great resource if you're ever stuck on site and you need to get something done really quickly, but it can also be used if you just want to find out more information, maybe you've started your programming in advance and you just want to know about some of the uh, best ways to go about completing your programming, you can always get in contact with our technical support. We have a global support <coughs> um, uh, email address, which is support at Faris Controls. That email address is monitored 365 days a year, so you should be, always be able to send that an email and get a response pretty quickly. Uh, that's monitored via all of the teams. Um, but if you want to speak to someone within your region, you have the option to do that as well. The uh, London uh, head office number for our technical support is up on the screen at the moment. Uh, all of this can be, uh, again, just accessed by going support, contact support. But if you want to uh, uh, um, speak to someone within your region, maybe the uh, Americas or Asia Pacific, uh, we have support teams and we have offices in those regions as well. Uh, then finally, for any sales matters as well, uh, you should be able to find your relevant uh, sales uh, number on also the, the contact page as shown above. Okay, uh, Baz, I think that's back to you now. Yeah, um, I see one question coming in. Uh, thanks for this, Ryan. Um, sure. the, the first one is to maybe can you go through the menu items? I mean, right now you've shown a lot of the slides, but the request is to um, go quickly through the menu on our website to show where these different items can be found. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay, so we can start off with uh, just uh, you know, the, the typical applications that Faris is used for and some of our showcase, which you can be found uh, just by going on the what is Faris link. Just wait for that to load up. That was the first link that I um, came up with. And then next to that, we have everything about our products. So our controllers, the LPC and VLC family are in their different sections. But if you're unsure which controller you need, under controllers, you have the which controller do I need page, which uh, is this page, uh, not that page rather, sorry, uh, that page. Um, we also then have all of our um, all of our accessory devices. Sorry about that. I think we'll... Uh, we have all of our accessory devices as well. So all of our Rios can be found here, EXTs, uh, EDNs, all of our button panels as well. So that's all underneath the products page. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's uh, all there for you to view. Our downloads page um, allows you to obviously just download uh, relevant stuff uh, to the Faro system. So for instance, our designer software, uh, also any brochures if you want them. Uh, documentation, so that could be any data sheets and specification uh, sheets for our hardware, manuals, our application notes, which I'll walk you through, and of course, our uh, resources as well, which I'll be showing you to the latter end of this webinar. And then finally, we have all of our support, which would be all of our video tutorials, all of the tips and tricks I talked about, the online help, and then finally, the contact page, uh, which will allow you to then uh, speak to someone with intent of support. And on this one, Ryan, allow me to jump in. If you yeah, can sure. go again to support and click video tutorials, mm -hmm. 
uh, go to the landing page. So just click this one. Um, this is, I think, a quite a useful page for people who are new to Faros to figure out a bit, okay, so there's a lot of different videos. Where should I start? Um, as Ryan correctly mentioned, the online training, so let's say a recording from the sessions normally given, that I think in total it's maybe one hour of video, maybe slightly more. But with that hour of video, you should be able to really get a lot of understanding. Um, slightly before, so a bit a bit older, but the Designer 2 tutorials, it, it's basically the same, but it was created, well, uh, before in a different style uh, as a complement to the uh, online trainings um, or complementary to the online trainings. It, it's basically the same thing, but in a slightly different style. Um, from this page, you should be able to figure out, okay, where do I get started? What does make most sense for me to further learn about the software and, and to really get started? Yeah. And maybe you can, I mean, if you click this one, Ryan, just for to show an example. The Designer 2 tutorials or the online training? Um, click yours, maybe, the online training. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you, you all mentioned this, but it, I can understand this might have gone a bit fast for people. Um, if you scroll down this page, this is really taking you in small steps across the different phases you will encounter when programming designer. Um, and you know, nine videos might seem like a lot, but every video, it's just a couple of minutes. And uh, this should allow you in a convenient way to really get started and be able to understand, great, I've now I've downloaded the software, I have this box in front of me, but how do I you know, go from here? This mm. should allow you to, um, to make it happen and to get started. Yeah, I mean, it goes literally from start to finish in terms of how you would build a project file. So when you guys download Designer, you'll notice that on the left hand side, there is about 10 different tabs and each tab gives you a different view, which allows you to basically configure program or or just yeah um, commission a different part of the system. Yeah. Um, you Each video is effectively a, a view. So it's very, very easy for you to move through these training tutorials with, yeah. with, with that in mind. And maybe if you go up one level. Mm -hmm. Uh, back to the uh, videos. Yes, please. So support. Yeah, support. Video tutorials. video tutorials. And if you would click here, designer two tutorials. If there is, you know, if you are figuring out, okay, I just go ahead myself, but there's one topic I need some help on. Over here, you should be able to find relatively um, down to the point, short video instructions, how small parts working. So if you would scroll further down and for example, look to, um, I don't know, VLC, for example, um, touch input a bit further down, scaling system, and then we get to VLC. So if you want to understand the, the basics, okay, what about layouts from VLC? You can see here there's a, a single point you could click and this directly takes you to the right point of the video to further um, explain and detail, of course, for all the other elements. Um, and I think that, that brings me to the question to ask if there might be other questions from people. I mean, feel free to type your question. Uh, we are quite good in time, which I, I really appreciate. Um, so please use the chat window to type a question uh, or use the Q&A button. Um, and it's of course a bit difficult to see if people are now typing with a question or not. Um, Ryan, do you have the uh, the question slide with the support address ready as well? Because that might be maybe something. Yeah, I certainly do. Yes. Because I think that at this moment, well, I just hope that everybody started to watch the videos or something like that. Um, but it seems there's limited questions coming at this moment. Um, so I think we will just be uh, rounding up this session. Um, as shown on this current screen, I mean, support at farwascontrols.com, that is the way to get in touch. Whether it is, you know, not not being sure where to start or not being uh, having a, a specific question there that you can't find an answer to, or just maybe um, want to talk to us to see if Farwas is, is the right solution for your project, just send a mail to support at farwascontrols.com. And from there, we will be able to help. Um, I think with that, yeah, as there are no other questions, um, I think I'm just going to oh, let me go here. Yeah, um, 
I guess with this, I, I'd like to thank you, Ryan, for this presentation. Um, and Mark, thanks for the questions. For everybody else, of course, again, support at farhousecontrols.com if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. Um, after this webinar, you might receive a small survey where you can provide feedback and suggest other topics for uh, future webinars. Um, your feedback is very much appreciated. With this, we'll be ending this webinar. Um, and oh, let me click the right button. Uh, with this, we'll be ending this webinar. I'd like to thank you for attendance and hope to see you next time.